Is the worst of the new vehicle inventory shortage in the rearview mirror? Indeed, we think it is. The headlines in Audible of News agree with us. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Didn't we just project that new car inventory would hit 1.9 million by March? We sure did. And we did have a couple of doubters in the comments section who thought we were just making it up. But as we pointed out, Kevin, 11 short days ago, we reported that new car inventory had hit 1.61 million units in November. And based upon the previous 90-day trend, we projected that car inventory would hit 1.9 million by March. Well, folks, that is proof of just how good Kevin is with this market projections. This headline states, U.S. new vehicle inventory levels rose sharply in December and crested 1.8 million, actually hitting 1,803,717 cars for the first time since May 2021, according to Cox Automotive. 1.8 million already? See, folks? This news shows that inventory is growing even faster than Kevin's projection. I've always been amazed at how efficiently he does that kind of stuff. He's a brilliant statistician, something that is invaluable in this market. He pays attention to market trends, makes predictions off real data, and I've witnessed him getting it right over and over again over the years. Thanks for all your benefits to our viewers, Kevin. Thanks, Liz. It is happening right in front of our eyes. It's so nice to have my projection totally validated by this new data. New vehicle inventories are starting to build again and relatively quickly, even faster than I thought, thanks to a combination of low new car incentives, think rebates, and higher interest rates that the Fed continues to pump up, and both factors have kept millions of potential buyers on the sidelines. You, my friends, you also deserve some credit here too because many of you have followed our advice and sat out of the market and allowed this to happen. While manufacturer assembly plants still face some minor supply chain challenges, there are abundant signs of recovery everywhere. North American production rose 12% in 2022 to 14.7 million vehicles. After all the bad news we got for so long, this is phenomenal. The U.S. new vehicle inventory increase is up nearly two-thirds from where it stood a year earlier, and that's huge. Not all brands or segments are building at the same rate, however, which explains why some cars in some markets haven't dropped. And yes, there are some dealers still hanging on to their very stupid market adjustment fees. Yep. But literally, nobody should be paying market adjustments right now. Not a soul. On a macro level, once empty dealership lots are starting to fill up again everywhere. Cox said this latest industry-wide inventory estimate represents a 58-day supply based on the selling rate from the most recent 30-day period. The top-line inventory and day supply figures represented year-over-year -year growth of about 65% and were approaching what the industry previously considered <laughs> normal levels, said Cox senior economist Charlie Chesbro. Did you hear that? Normal levels. Charlie Chesbo wrote in his monthly report, new vehicle supply has risen by almost 500,000 units since the end of September, just over three months ago for a 37% increase. From a year ago, the inventory is up 715,000 units or 66%. No wonder the prices were so sky high back mm -hmm. then. If this trend continues and it seems likely to do so, automakers will be under increased pressure to move the metal with higher incentives. <laughs> higher incentives. You know what that means, folks. While MSRP isn't necessarily going down, savings are coming up. Watch for manufacturer rebates and incentives to start coming back with a vengeance. The supply chain chaos of the past two years broke every pattern and system in the American car industry, including how cars are priced, but it is indeed in the rear view mirror. Some of the old familiar rhythms are finally coming back. Car dealers are actually starting to build up a supply of unsold cars. This is leading to a return to discounts and rebates that we were all once used to. Right on. Car dealers measure their supply of new cars to sell with a metric they call days of inventory. How long it would take to sell out all of their cars at today's sales rate if they never managed to get more. Yeah. An old industry rule of thumb told dealers to keep about 60 day supply on the sales lot and have another 15 day supply on reserve order. That ensured that they had the right mix of colors and options to meet almost any potential request that walked through their door. The financial side of running a car dealership is rather complex, especially now. Dealers generally make payments on the cars they keep on the lot, often to a bank controlled by the company that built them. This can leave the factory or the dealer with an oversupply. Oversupply always works in the favor of the car buyer, pushing both the factory and the dealer to discount cars, effectively reducing prices to get them moving again. For dealers, having unsold inventory brings additional carrying costs with added floor plan expense, 
but it also means a return to a more traditional form of automotive retail we are all familiar with, being able to satisfy a typical customer's desire for immediate gratification instead of having to order or locate a vehicle and wait. Sure. You see, folks, industry professionals know many car buyers are rather knee-jerk responders when it comes to cars. The state of normalcy is rapidly returning to the car business, folks. Thanks for your patience up to this point. It really is paying off. Steve Gates, the incoming Toyota National Dealer Advisory Council chairman, told Automotive News this month, all of the blacktop still kind of bothers me, referring to the <laughs> formerly empty parking lots. Yeah. This is bizarre, the current growth that is, but I'm more comfortable paying a lot of floor plan expense and seeing cars. Gates Company is Gates Automotive Family, operating 11 dealerships in Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee, including three Toyota stores. Well, I think most customers would agree. We are all more comfortable seeing cars on the lot. More choices mean better prices. Ford Motor Company was the only reporting automaker to record more than a one-month supply in December, which is fantastic for Ford. I'm a fan of Ford, and with the rapidly growing inventory, look for Ford bargains out there. Steve Gates, who I mentioned earlier, said, I don't think that any one of us want to go back to the day where we had way too much inventory. If we could get back to 60 or 70% of what we used to have, that would be ideal. And that's exactly what we've been talking about, folks. Yeah, ideal indeed. And ideal for car buyers, too. You'd be happy to know we're actually ahead of schedule to meet the 2 million inventory threshold that we projected for June. We've emphasized this several times, everyone. The market is definitely bending in your favor. Whatever you do, do not pay market adjustments or dealer markups. Tell those dealers to take a flying leap off a cliff. <laughs> Our projections are proving to be so good right now, it's almost like we got a crystal ball with a clear vision of the future. Hang in there, everyone. The car industry is quickly returning to normal, and it's dragging the most stubborn dealers with it, even if they are loudly kicking and screaming along the way. Yes, some of them are a bit like spoiled, rotten little brats. I'm just delighted that we're able to share more good news with all of you. 1,803,717 vehicles in inventory, and that's a 58-day supply. This is amazing news to start off 2023 and a fabulous way to close out 2022. The bottom line is, every time you click on one of our videos right now, the Homework Guide channel, it's like getting a pocket full of free money. If you'd like to show some gratitude to us for our great car market updates and car buying advice videos like this one, the links for tips appearing on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below. PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. Our tip system was suggested to us by you, our viewing audience, generous people. Ask for a way to donate to support our mission. Voluntary tips are awesome because they provide a good indicator to tell us how much you appreciate what we do. And apparently several of you love us a lot, just as we love you. Yeah. And we often convert your generosity into more free services for our viewers. If a tip isn't an option for you, no problem at all. Just show us your thanks by subscribing and recommending our videos to your friends and family. I also want to remind our viewers about our very generous offer for free car buying assistance. Any viewer has contacted us would tell you, you don't have to blow your hard earned cash on a paid car club membership. Just text us your name, 701-441-3399, and we'll be in touch with you. Also, if you're on Facebook, drop by and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website too. There are so many free resources for car buyers there right now, it's mind blowing. Yes, and many people comment on our videos that they'd love to have Liz's help on their car deal. Liz is the one who monitors that line, the 701-441-3399. So you get Liz, guys. Make sure you get in touch with her. All right, if you're new here to the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We thank you for subscribing and welcome you to our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. Once again, we're batting a 1,000 on earning your trust. See you next time. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.